Let's attempt to refactor a WPF application to use vertical slice, also known as feature slice architecture. So there's always been a lot of talk in the .NET community about vertical slice architecture. And of course, vertical slice architecture exists outside of the .NET world as well. But basically the idea of vertical slice architecture is rather than splitting your entire application into layers, like this is the database layer, this is the UI layer, et cetera, et cetera, you split your application by features. So you'd have some kind of feature like a get orders feature and everything inside of that feature would handle all of those layers from as high up as the UI layer all the way through your service layers and down to the database. And the nice thing about grouping things by features is that your application is much more cohesive. Everything related to a feature is grouped together and can change together. And then whenever you wanna add a new feature, you simply have to add that new feature. You don't have to tediously go layer by layer by layer and add everything related to that feature. It's much more cohesive. Everything for that new feature can stay together and be added together. Now, the way I'm introducing this, it sounds like I literally just discovered vertical slice architecture, but I've been familiar with it for a while, but I've mostly only applied it in backend applications. Today, we're gonna move to the front end, and this is where I really haven't played much with vertical slice architecture because there's some issues that I can imagine in my head. I feel like on the back end, it's much easier to keep features separate. But on the front end, I feel like there's more risk of mixing features together. For example, authentication could be a feature, but that could also be used in many other features. So I'm worried about the feature sharing there because I don't want some kind of feature spaghetti where like all the features reference each other or something. And then maybe even things outside of authentication. What if you had some kind of dashboard UI for your application? That could also reference many other features as well. But back on topic, we're gonna refactor this WPF application to use vertical slice architecture. And this might be an iterative approach. I might do this right now and publish this content, read more, get some more feedback, and come back in, tweak things around, and continuously do that until we get a good example of vertical slice architecture in a WPF or front-end application. Anyways, that's enough rambling. Let's introduce this app. So this is secret message. This is something that I use to demonstrate Firebase authentication. I have a whole series on creating that, but we technically have two features here, I would say, or at least two groups of features. So maybe I should just run this app and introduce it. So <laughs> default splash screen, just the demo stuff. But anyways, we can log in and perform all kinds of authentication tasks. Yeah, you can log in, you can log out, you can view your profile, you can send an email verification link to verify your email. And then of course you can also register. Oh, you can also go through a forgot your password flow. So I would consider all of that stuff the authentication feature which we're gonna refactor into. But the other feature we have, don't make fun of how simple this is, but it's displaying this quote unquote secret message, which we fetch from our backend ASP.NET API, which is very simple, but requires that we're authenticated. So this was just a demo to introduce authentication. But that's the idea here. We have two feature groups here, authentication and the secret message logic. And as we see over here, we are not implementing vertical slice architecture. So things are not grouped by feature and we can see that. So we have this register view all the way down here in the views folder. We got our register view model up here. We have our register command all the way up here. So everything's scattered around, not very cohesive. Everything's grouped by like what it is. Like, is it a command? Is it a view model? Is it a view? I'd rather have it grouped by feature, of course. And maybe it's not too bad how it is now, but as our application grew, if this was a larger application, then this view models folder could become huge. And then it might be hard to connect everything within these folders. And I suppose that's another key point of vertical slice architecture. It really proves to be most beneficial for larger applications with many features. But for demo purposes, this is a pretty small app. We don't have many features, but we have enough features to implement vertical slice architecture, which I keep talking about, let's do it. So I wanna group our application by features. So starting off, let's add a features folder. And as I laid out before, 
we really have two groups of features. We have our authentication feature and we have our secret message feature. So let's create folders for those inside of our features folder. So authentication and then secret message. Let's add a folder for that. So these two features should be enough to begin organizing. So at this point, let's just start tearing down all of these folders and moving them into their corresponding feature. So the load secret message command, we can guess what that does. It loads the secret message. It also puts it onto the home view model. So let's put this load secret message command into the secret message feature folder. Let's take our login command, logout command, register command, send email verification email command and send password reset email command into the authentication feature. We'll probably move those more specifically in a bit. And now let's delete our commands folder. So that's enough for commands. Now let's move on over to stores. So we have this authentication store. This stores the application state related to authentication. Could probably have broken down this authentication store into more classes since it kind of does a lot related to authentication. But nonetheless, let's move this into our authentication feature. There we go. Let's delete our stores folder. We also have this queries folder. And this contains an I get secret message query. So this is a refit interface that allows us to hit our API and fetch the secret message from the endpoint on our API. So of course, this is related to our secret message feature. Let's move that into the secret message feature folder and delete this queries folder. And now just comes down to view models and views. So the login view model, password reset view model, I guess the profile view model and the register view model can move into authentication feature folder for that. This home view model, things get a little bit tricky. So actually, if we run this application, I'll show what the home view model is. So the home view model is the view model for our home view. So our home view binds to it to get data to display on the UI. And as we can see on this home view, it displays the secret message, but it also does some authentication stuff too. So it greets the authenticated user and provides this logout link. So this is where things get kind of tricky. Which feature does this belong to? And I would say technically it kind of belongs to both features. So in the future, we might need some kind of construct outside the concept of features that can depend on all of our features and aggregate them together to do something like form the home view. But I think for now, I'm gonna put this into our secret message feature. And the idea here is that I feel like I'm okay with our secret message feature, depending on the authentication feature, but I certainly wouldn't want that the other way around because it doesn't really make sense for the authentication feature to have to know about the secret message feature. So we're gonna enforce that dependency. It's not really represented by our folder structure, but our secret message feature at least at this point, can depend on the authentication feature. Hmm, I still don't really like this. I feel like we could do better. But anyways, let's move over to views, the last part. So the home view, we're going to put it where the home view model is in the secret message feature. And then all these other views are related to authentication. So let's put those into the authentication feature, delete our views folder. And then lastly, we have this HTTP folder. And this is an HTTP message handler for our refit client. And what it does is handle passing up the authenticated users access token to our backend, and also handling some automatic token refreshes as well. So this is related to authentication. Let's just throw it into the authentication feature, although this is more infrastructure related. So I'm not sure it really has to go into our features folder. But let's move it in there, we can extract it out later. So at this point, we've moved everything into our features folder and we've begun grouping by feature. Now, this authentication feature folder is pretty big. And in reality, each of these things are somewhat different features. So logging in could be its own feature. So it could registering and really all of these different authentication use cases. So let's go ahead and create subfolders within this feature for each of those different authentication use cases. So logging in, we're gonna create a login folder and move all of the login related stuff into there. There we go, that looks good, I'm satisfied with that. Let's also handle registration. So we'll create a register folder. 
and move the register command view and view model into there. There we go. Starting to thin this out. Let's also add a folder for view profile. So I'm trying to name these as verbs that actually represent what the user is trying to do. So the user is trying to view their profile. And for that, they'll need the profile view and the profile view model. Let's put that in there. Another authentication use case is password resetting. So we're going to have a reset password folder in here. Let's move the view and view model for that. And there, I guess logout can technically be its own feature. Let's add a logout folder and just put in this logout command. All right, I forgot to add the send password reset email command into the reset password feature folder. Let's add that. And then the last authentication use case we have is email verification. So let's have a verify email folder and put in this send email verification email command. So this looks good. I like how this is grouped very specifically by feature. So for example, everything related to logging in is grouped nicely together. I feel like it makes sense to leave the authentication store outside of any of these specific folders because of course it really handles a lot of things related to authentication. And same really goes for this Firebase Auth HTTP message handler. Does it belong in the features folder? or should it be taken somewhere else to live? I'd say that's an ongoing question, but at the moment, I do like how close it is to the rest of our authentication features. So I'm pretty satisfied with this authentication feature folder. So moving down to the secret message feature folder, this looks good, but I wanna have a subfolder in here to kind of describe the use case for the user. So really they're trying to view the secret message. So let's add a folder for that and move everything related to that use case into that feature folder. All right, so everything should be pretty much split up by feature at this point. And we have our sub features that describe the actual use cases pertaining to each feature. I didn't update namespaces. That's kind of the least of my worries right now, but let's run the application and make sure everything works as expected. I'm not saying we shouldn't update these namespaces. I feel like we should, but just focusing on the folder structure for now and feature slicing everything. So application seems to work. Everything looks pretty good as expected. All right, looks good. Pretty good start. Is this perfect? Maybe not quite, maybe not yet. We might have to iterate on it, but let's try changing a feature and seeing how cohesive the changes are gonna be. So what we're gonna do is change how we send email verification links when the user registers. So currently when the user registers, and we can see this in our register command, we always send a verification email. So I just have this hard coded to true, and this is hitting Firebase authentication. This is a NuGet package that interfaces with Firebase authentication, I should say. So we create a user with the email and password provided, and we always send this verification email. So what I wanna add is a checkbox on the UI so the user can toggle whether or not they want this email verification link sent to them or if they wanna defer it to after they register. So is this use case realistic? Eh, probably not. We'd probably just always wanna send the verification email, but let's go ahead and implement this change. So let's start on the UI. So come into our register view and we're just gonna have another row after this confirm password password box. So let's add another row to this grid. Let's move all these buttons down a row. So submit button to row five, navigate to login button row six. And in between here, let's throw in a checkbox. What the heck? I do not have any IntelliSense. Where did my IntelliSense go? Oh, okay. Close the file, reopened it. And now I have IntelliSense. I'll take it. Anyways, let's add a checkbox. That's going to go in grid row four. We'll add just 10 margin to the top. For the content, we'll say send verification email. And we're gonna bind this checkbox. So we're gonna bind the is enabled property to something on our view model. And we wanna get that on our view model so that we can eventually use it in our register command when we actually register. So this property on our view model, we'll call it should send verification email. So now let's move over to our view model and add that property. So we'll put that at the bottom. Let's use this handy prop change snippet so that we get I notify property changed raised. So it's going to be a boolean for should send verification 
email add the property that looks good it's actually defaulted to true because i feel like it should be an opt-out thing most users would probably want the verification email sent anyways so now that we get this data on our view model we can use it in our register command so we reference our register view model in here and now we just need to reference the should send verification email property that's on our view model now. So let's put a breakpoint down and test this out. Should work fine. Uh, the UI might be ugly. We might have to play with that. So let's register and, oh, that looks good. Okay. Oh, uh, it's not defaulted to true. And I think that's because for some reason I binded the checkbox is enabled property. We want the is checked property. So when you check this checkbox, it'll set should send verification email on our view model to true and the opposite for when you uncheck the checkbox. That's what we want. So here we go. It is checked by default. That's what we added to our view model. So let's make up an email and let's leave this checked. So let's submit. And here we go. Should send verification email is true as our UI should since we have that checked. And here we go successfully registered. And when we uncheck this checkbox and try registering, we get should send verification email as false. So that's great. All the logic works. We successfully added this behavior and let's look at our changes. So as we see over here, the files that changed are all within this register folder. So only our register feature has changed. It was quite easy to make those changes. We just went through each of these files that conveniently sit right next to each other. So very cohesive changes we have here. And I didn't have to search one by one through some massive like commands folder, then a massive view models folder, then a massive views folder. It was all conveniently and cohesively placed in this register feature folder. And that really demonstrates the power of vertical slice architecture. Making changes and adding features is quite pleasant and cohesive. I keep saying cohesive because, well, it is pretty cohesive. So in summary, we've refactored our application into, I'm going to say it again, cohesive vertical slices so that we can add features and change features together. So I likely will come back and continue to iterate on this architecture. So for example, we still have dependencies from feature to feature, which doesn't feel great. And I still want to extract a better construct for these things like the home view that really contain multiple features. But most importantly, with the vertical slice architecture we have laid out now, we were able to see how easy it is to change a feature. And there's plenty of other cool stuff we could do with even just this simple vertical slice architecture that we have now, which I will demonstrate in the future. So feel free to leave feedback with where this is now. I'm really excited to hear others' thoughts on vertical slice architecture. So if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.